Lord, I just pray for the guys that are on the way. They'd come. We'd, all, all of us would get here and the coffee and all the things that need to happen. We pray this all in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. You came. You died. You rose from the dead. We're so thankful, Jesus, for everything. It's, this is Ash Wednesday, and we think about what that means. Lord, all, all the Christians all over the world are just, are just celebrating the joy and the hope that it came from your suffering, Lord Jesus. We pray. We thank you for that. And raising from the dead and what it means to be yours for eternity. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. So we're going through a, a, a study, and it's really important that I read these passages. And I'm not going to read them all. I'm just going to hit the high point in some of them. But I want you to pick up the, the notes, and it says, Salvation by faith alone. And we're going to start by this, because what we were just talking about today, about how the world is just coming apart at the seams, and how do we respond as Christians? And what we do is we remember that Jesus came. We remember that he loves us more than our sin, the Father. We, we, we remember that Jesus rose from the dead. We remember that he defeated the power of sin and death in our lives. We remember the fact that he gave us his Holy Spirit to guide and comfort us. I, I, you, you're, you're in there, you're arm wrestling with the Holy Spirit. You're in, remember when Jacob was uh, wrestling with God, with Jesus, in the in pre-incarnate Christ, and he's wrestling and wrestling, wouldn't let go. Oh, you've, got, you've got to grab a hold of God and hang on. You've got to do this because your life, listen, it's going to be extremely difficult. Whether you, look at people, it's amazing. You, you tell people, come to Christ, and here's what it means and everything, but they feel so, so they're so pulled here and there because of the things they want to do and the, you know, the things they can't do and the, and the problems they have, and, and they just can't grasp it. And you just got to give them the word, give them the truth, give them Jesus, give them the Jesus, and be honest with them. Be honest with them. Life is just as difficult for you. And, and that's what it said. Jesus said, it's, it's going to be difficult, but I'm with you. Don't be afraid. Be courageous. And so all of you today have to think about how you're going to talk to and interact with, number one, your wife. She's going through lots of things you probably haven't even figured out yet. She's going through, you've got to listen. That's why it says, listen, 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 listen. So that she believes that, now listen, you may not be able to solve the problem, probably shouldn't comment, but listen, 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 because then she feels at least she's got a friend. She has somebody. One of the biggest problems we have in the marriages is that the wives just feel that they're, they're lonely. They don't have a friend because we are not being their friend like we should. And that's the, that's the reality of what's going on. And that's what it is that Jesus is, he's with you, but he wants you to turn around and treat people like he treated people. And when you do that, the gospel of Christ Jesus, the light will shine, and then you can give them the booklet, the written word, and you can live and you can do the things you need to do. Are you going to mess up? Yes. Are you not going to be able to do that right? Yes. All the things are there. You are totally messed up. I'm messed up. But guess what? I'm messed up for Christ. I want to, I want to fail forward, okay? Fail forward. Uh, uh, Tim Timmons gave me that. Now, I've heard that message like 30 years ago. Fail forward, okay? fail forward. And that means that we are just going to keep trusting Christ one day at a time as we go through our life. Now, that's a generic, I know, that's very simple, Don. We teach that in Sunday school. You, you know, what's new, okay? There's nothing new. It's the same as when we're teaching, a, a, you know, a seven-year-old or a 27-year-old or a 47-year-old. It's trust Christ and go out and live your life and turn away from yourself and move forward, okay? So here we go. So salvation by faith, Ephesians, it talks about this, about how, I want to read this, in, in, in verse 11 says, in him we were also chosen, having, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity, in conformity with the purpose of his will, in order that we who were the, or were the first to put our hope in Christ might be the praise of his glory, and you, now listen, you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. Why is he doing this? To bring honor and glory to what? To Jesus, to the Father, because he loves us and he's going to give us his spirit, the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the one who, and you, if you 
I have to understand this. A lot of people, I don't know how to describe this, and it's an awkward thing. A lot of people are out looking for the Holy Spirit. Okay, they, they, they've got it packaged, you know, parcelized. And that's how it is. When you come to Christ and you believe, the Holy Spirit's with you. In fact, you wouldn't even come to God or want to be with God or do anything about the Word of God unless the Holy Spirit was there bringing you and bringing you into the truth. And when you read the Word of God, the Holy Spirit is the one who makes it real to you so you can understand what's going on. And you have to trust and believe that the Holy Spirit dwells within you. Because, see, that's the key to living your life for Christ. Because you don't want to do it, and you can't do it. Okay, let's just lay it out. You, 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 don't, you can't even want to do it correctly let alone do it correctly. Do you understand? It's God working in you. And we're going to talk about this in a minute. When Jesus talks about, you know, if you follow me, you do this. If you love me, you do that. You do that. What Jesus is saying, if you love me, if you've come to me, then the Spirit of God's in you, then you're going to be doing these things. In other words, if you know me, you love me, then this is what's going to happen in your life. This is what's going to go on. And that power to do it comes from, not from you, not because you work and do it, but from the Holy Spirit. Okay? Um, in um, Ephesians 2, 1 through 9, let's, I guess we read the whole thing here. We can't miss it. As for you, you were dead in your trash, trash, uh, transgressions and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. Did you hear that? The spirit of the evil one is out there working in the lives of all those who are disobedient, those who have, what, not accepted Christ. If that's true, then, and, and now listen carefully, in first, uh, uh, John, first John, it says this, it says, at 4.4, 4, it says, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Now picture this, you've got two types of people, those who are being influenced and led by who? By the evil one, and those who are, who are in, indwelled with and led by the Holy Spirit. You have two groups of people. And then and, and the thing is that you need to remember, you used to be in that area, that dead, dark, black area, and you are no longer in that area now. You're in the place where there's light and there's truth. And so what you need to do is to realize that even in your mind, your body, and your heart, there's all these conflicts. You need to move forward and follow the light. Follow the light. That's what Jesus said in in. John chapters uh, three, it says, uh, you know, and, and in chapter one, in the first part of it, and we'll talk about that in a minute. So let me read this also as I keep going. And uh, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. Think about all the people who have turned away from Christ and turned away from the way God would have things to go based on the word of God. Think of all the people that are worshiping at the altar of self-indulgence, and, and that in our country would be what? Would be abortion. In other words, convenience, the, self, you know, the, the idol of convenience, being able to do whatever you want, no matter what, you can do it. And the point is, there's no restraints, right? And whether you can have these children, you can give children, uh, what do you call it, the uh, hormones and all that things, you can do these operations, you can do all these things, you can do all kinds of stuff, not even tell the parents about it anymore. The parental rights are, are, are our world is just coming on, you know, it's coming apart. Who would ever think such an evil thing? Okay. And then both parties had uh, done that, um, what do you call it, the uh, marriage uh, act of what, you know, what marriage was and everything. And now all of a sudden, that's politically incorrect. And so now we're going to a different program. And where did all that stuff come from? Where did it come from? Did it come from the, now think of it for a minute. This is, this is, is a big question. Did it come from the Bible? Did all this new information that, you know, the, did it come from the Bible? Or did it come from the world? Where did it come from? And it came from the world. It came from he who is sort of running the program. It didn't come from Jesus Christ, and it didn't come from the Holy Spirit. So what do you do about it? So you turn to Christ, and you go, and you continue to be light and salt. Now, what happens if you're light and salt in the face of the things I just talked about? What happens? You're persecuted. They turn against you. They say that you're you're judging them. It says that you're doing this, that, and the other. We're not judging anybody. All we do is tell people what the Word of God says, so they can learn the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is when they feel they feel judged because this is what God said, but they reject God and they reject what He says. And so they're what they're doing. They're worshiping another God. You understand? When you reject God, 
then you turn someplace else. You either turn to yourself, become your own God, or you worship something else. Now watch what he says here. It says this. All of us also lived among them at what time? Craving what? Uh, gratifying the cravings of our flesh. That means whatever we want to do. Following its desires and thoughts. That's what we did. That's how what it means to not have Christ. Okay? And the eighth chapter of Romans tells us very clearly. And verse 6. And God raised us up with Christ. Or, or verse 5. And made us alive. I'm, I'm going to go to 4. I'm sorry. Boy, I shipped, I got to get back here. Let me go back again. I want to verse 3. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following the desires and thought uh, and des its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. But because of his great love for us, God, who was rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in our transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. Okay, now hold there. Think of it this way. When it says we were deserving the wrath of God, that means when we lived like that, we were not, what, covered by the blood of Jesus Christ, all right? We did not have the innocent blood of Christ, the innocent blood of Christ covering our sins. It's very important to remember that, because that's what it means to be the Lamb of God. That's what this is, Ash Wednesday is all about. This is Jesus. He's going. He's going to the cross. And what happened? He took upon himself your sin and my sin, gave his blood, and he died for us and took the wrath of the Father. We deserve that. We deserve the wrath, but he took the wrath. Okay, now let's see what it says. How do you get, now listen carefully. This is really important. If God is all-powerful and his wrath is upon us, how do we get from being sinners to being saved without what? Without God's mercy, because God's mercy did not, he did not what? Zap us before we came to Christ. So it says at one time we lived like this. What was happening when we were living it like that at that time? Was the wrath of God still? Yes, it was there pending. But did, what did God do? By his mercy, he did not what? Punish us for our sin. He allowed us to go from where we were and developing in our sin to that point where we came to Christ. So when the so you got mercy first, okay? And then you have grace, unmerited favor. So let's read that here, verse 6. It says, four, sorry, thank you, I keep messing up. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, in order that in the coming ages we might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. In other words, we're going to be the example of his grace and mercy. For it is by grace, it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. So I want to, I'm going to, we're going to go from here, but we've got to get this. This is all God's work for us and in us and through us. You understand? It's everything about what God has done for us, and it's salvation by faith alone. When you believe in Christ and you trust in Christ, the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you then, as you read the Word of God, and you turn from what? Turn to the Spirit, away from the flesh. Again, chapter 8 in, in Romans tells us this. You live by the Spirit, and things are going to go in that direction, and you're going to bring honor and glory to the Lord. Because then you get to what? Rome, you go from the first part of Romans 8, you get to Romans where do you want to get to? I really want to get to verse, what, 28, right? Romans 8, 28, all things work together for good for those who, what, who love God, called according to your purposes, and that's the key. Do you love him or not? You've called according to his purposes, and how does that happen? By grace, by mercy and grace, and that's what you got. You guys got to remember this. You guys got to know this. You got to go to bed at night when you sleep and know this, and you wake up in the middle of the night, you got to know what we just said. When you're talking to your children, you got to know this. When you're talking to your grandchildren, something you got to know this. When you, when you're talking to some guy in the street, you're talking about some guy that's down and out. You're talking about somebody's in the hospital and they're on their way out. You got to know this. You have to know this in your heart. This is why we're spending so much time on this. This is what the Word of God is about. This is who Jesus Christ is. This is the gospel. So let's go to the next thing. I brought something that today is new. 
And I brought this on purpose because we're going to go through, I know you think, when are we going to get there? The true followers of Christ, there's a whole uh, uh, two pages of, of quotes and things from Jesus as to what that means. But I, I want to read what Jesus said in John chap, in uh, the book of John and a couple other places, what Jesus was talking about, and then what Peter said, because it's really important. So we've got a couple minutes here. If you guys would pick it up, it says, Saving faith eats and drinks the living word of God. Saving faith eats and drinks the living word of God. It's on your table. Pick it up. Everybody got one. If you don't have one, there's others on the table. Eric, get some. Pass them around if you could. Everybody, come on, guys. Get the notes if you could. So here we go. Je uh, Jesus is talking to the people, and he's trying to explain to these large group of people. Now, picture all these people are following Jesus. He's Fed 5,000, he's fed 4,000, he's been healing everybody who shows up, right? He has a massive crowd of people, a massive crowd of people that are following him. And he's teaching all these people, and he's teaching them, and the point he's trying to make to these people is about this idea of being a sinner and that he has to go and die as the Lamb of God, and they need to trust and believe in him, and that he is the Messiah, okay? So what ends up happening is these people want him as their king. They want him as their king, the, the kind of Messiah that they want. They want him to come in and destroy the rule of the Romans and then come in and create this, this massive, wonderful Israel that they want to see. And they're following him for that purpose. And they all say, we believe in you. And Jesus throws back at them and says, I, he says, yeah, but I don't believe in you. Okay. In other words, he knows what they're after. Now think about this when you think about separating the goats from the sheep. All right. That's what Jesus talked about. This is the most chilling thing I've read in the Bible. It just, it brings a fear of the Lord upon me. I do not want to be a goat. I don't want to be one that says he knows Christ, one he does the Bible studies, does all the stuff he does, and then Jesus says, I never knew you. I, I don't want to be anywhere near that. I don't want to be part of that. And so many people don't even address that or talk about it because it's so, it so really does bring the fear of the Lord upon people. And when you talk about that, then people say, well, you're judging me. Why are you judging me? I'm not judging you. I'm looking at myself. I'm looking at me because I want to be one of those who Jesus says, well done, good and faithful servant. I want to be one of those that he brings with him through the narrow gate. Okay. That's how we go. By the way, the way you go through the narrow gate is Jesus brings you through. Okay. It's not like you squeeze through. Okay. He brings you through. So now let's go through a little bit here. In John 6, 51, he says this. Now listen. He says, I am, now listen carefully, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Jesus Christ is the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Now later, he talks about eating and drinking his blood and his body, and it was a spiritual metaphor, and the people freaked out. How can we eat you? You know, we, we can't eat your body and everything. And they all said, this guy's weird. They, a lot of people said, this guy's lost his mind. And they left him. Now watch what happens here. He goes on in 663, he says, the spirit gives life. Where do you get the Holy? Where, where is it that you get your faith? Where does it come from? It comes from the Holy Spirit. It comes from God. It comes from, from Jesus as the author and perfect of your faith. He uses his spirit. The spirit gives life. The flesh counts for nothing. In other words, you can't do anything yourself to be saved. Oh, watch what he said. The words I have spoken to you, they are all full of the spirit of spirit and life. So in other words, the words that Jesus speaks, the word of God, the living word, is how you and I eat and drink and become the children of God. The Holy Spirit uses the word of God. Remember, what does it say? In Romans what? Romans 10 9 and 10, it says, where does faith come from? Where does it come from? By the word of God. That's where it comes from, by the word of God. Now, let's go on a little further. It says, John 1, 1 through 5 says, in the beginning was the word. This is John 1, not first. Uh, John chapter 1. This is critical. Listen, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So the word of God is God. It's Jesus Christ. Now, watch what it says. He was with God in the beginning. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. 
The light shines in the darkness. Now, that's where we are. We're living in the darkness, and everywhere you look, the darkness is getting darker and darker and darker and darker. Now, you know what that does? I'll tell you the truth. Now, listen what it does to you. If you're a Christian and you walk with Christ, you know what it does? You become more and more what? Obvious. Now, listen carefully. The more you follow Christ, the more you decide to read, it, read the Word of God, study the Word of God, memorize the Word of God, it'll start, the Holy Spirit will start living through you more and more. He just does. And when that happens and the world gets darker and darker and darker and darker, what's going to happen to that little light of yours, huh? That little light of yours, just one little light over there in the corner is going to shine in the darkness. And that means you're going to become more obvious and therefore you're going to be a target. Why? They love, this is in the third chapter of John, they love their darkness and they hate the light. And if you represent the light, they're going to hate you. Jesus said what? They're going to hate you. Um, I think 15, he said in a couple places, they hated me and they're going to hate you too. You know why they're going to hate you? Because your light will shine in the darkness. Unless you don't want it to shine. That's when you do the little goat sheep test. You know what I mean? That you might be in the goat program where you're a Christian, you're a good Christian, you do all these good things, but you don't really want it. I love this when people say, well, I don't want to make people feel uncomfortable. You know, I don't want my faith to make somebody else feel uncomfortable because they have their faith, they have their opinion, I have my opinion. By the way, if your salvation is based on your opinion, you're in deep, that's, we got a problem because it's not your opinion. Your salvation, if we just read a little bit ago in the first and second chapter of Ephesians, is your salvation is because God wants you to be with him for eternity, and he chose you to be there, and he predestined you to be there, and he sent Jesus died and rose from the dead, and that's why you're a Christian, and that's it. It's not your opinion. It's a, you didn't build your faith from a little thing, and I built a little more, and I built it. No. Jesus gave you the faith through the Holy Spirit. We just talked about it a moment ago. Now, let's just read a couple more. I'm sorry. These, each of these passages we could teach on for you know months. It says, or years. So, verse 3. Um, in 1 John 3, it says, Through him all things were made. Without him nothing has been made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of the world. The light shines where? Where does the light shine? When the sun is out and you got the flashlight on it, it just doesn't have an effect. But what happens? When the light shines, where does it shine? In the darkness, and the darkness is not overcome it. Now let's go, let's talk about what does Peter know? Now, what's Peter know? Peter knows what it means to, to be with Christ, to love him, to see all the things he's done. And yet, who was the greatest failure, if you think about it? Peter, after all of this, what did he do? He denied Christ, not just once. He did it three times. Now, now Peter, you know, he did all this stuff, and then he did this, and, you know, talk about the biggest hypocrite and all these other things. And here he is denying Christ and doing all these other things. And yet Peter is the rock, and Peter is the guy who Jesus used an example, and Peter is the one who realized more than anything it's Jesus and not him. In other words, he knew it, and when Jesus was talking to him at the end of John, and he's on the beach, and he says, what does he say? Peter, do you love me? And what was it he kept saying to him? Do you love me? If you love me, feed my sheep. And then he said, do you love me? And he said, then feed my sheep. Do you love me and feed my sheep? In other words, what is it to love Christ? What is it to be a Christ lover? It's to feed his sheep, to go out and do. That's what we do in Romania. That's what we do in Uganda. That's what we do in Pakistan. And that's exactly what's happening in Pakistan. We're feeding the sheep because there's nobody to feed them. That's what we're doing. That's what we, we reach out to tell them about Jesus and to feed the sheep. Now, listen. You and I have a lot of time spent every day thinking about how we feed ourselves and how we feed our own desires and our own wants, okay? And that's called the flesh. That's just a natural thing. We, we get all over the kids. The, the teenage girls are doing the selfies, you know, doing all this. Stuff. Don't worry. You're doing selfies all day. It's, it's, in, it's just part of your life. You're constantly thinking about yourself. You're constantly trying to satisfy yourself. All these things are going on all the time. You gotta, you gotta really acknowledge that and then get over it and say, look at I'm I'm a sinner. I'm not who I need to be, but I want to be in Christ and I want Christ to be in me. I want the light to shine. Do you want the light to shine or do you want to hide it a little bit? 
Well, I go to church and we'll, we'll let all the light shine. We'll all be here. Oh, this is so glorious. Everything's fine. And you leave the church and you go somewhere else and put the light down, right? Let's not overdo it. Let's not make people uncomfortable. And the answer is, if you don't become uncomfortable in your sin, you'll just be comfortable in your sin all the way to hell. You got it? And our job is not to go in and disrupt people or be, what is it, be with gentleness and respect, give a reason for the hope. But listen to me. Listen, did you hear what it said? A reason for the hope. Do you understand? what I'm going to say it again. A re, this is Peter talking. A reason for what? The hope. What does that mean? Somebody's going to have to notice that you have hope. What does that mean? It means things are going bad. Things are out of control. Things are that. And you, you have hope in Christ. You have hope that it will work out. You, what's that deal I keep telling you my dad used to say? It'll all work out. He had hope. I didn't have hope. All I could do is look at despair. I had despair. He had hope. <laughs> we had two different places. And you go around talking talk to the people today. If you really talk to them and you really get into conversation with them, what do they got? What do they got? Despair. They think things are coming apart. They think things are going to get worse. They think this, that, and the other thing. They have what? Despair. And you need to be there to have what? To have hope in Christ. That's what it's talking about. So... As we close here, I want to read this part. And then, like I said, we're going to be back to this. 2 Peter 1, 3 through 11 talks about this. What do we do? How do we live? Now, you're talking about Peter now. He's saying, look, it, I've been through it all. I've listened, and I've listened to Paul, and I see what he's teaching, and that's Scripture, and that's, that's from God. All these things he said. I, he says, now, listen, this is the deal. And I love this. I love it because he really brings together the idea of we're saved by, by, by mercy and by faith and by alone, and at the other side, we have to take our, our responsibility, okay, as being saved, so we can how we can live, so we can live in the light, so that people can see our hope, okay? So here's what he says, watch. This is uh, 2 Peter 1, 3 through 11. His divine power has given us everything we need for godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Through these, he has given us his very great and precious promises, so that through them, you may participate in the divine nature, having escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. This is it, guys. This is it. We can live and have the divine nature. We can live the life we want to and be escape the evil desires. Now listen to how it happens. He said, for this very reason, make every effort, here it is, make every effort to add to your faith goodness and to goodness knowledge and to knowledge self-control, and to self-control, perseverance, and to perseverance, godliness, and to godliness, mutual affection, love one another, and to mutual affection, love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, that means you don't get them all at once, you just work at it in increasing measure, okay? We need this for a lot of us here that are stumbling. Now listen to what he says, increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective, that means you will be able to be light and salt. So here we go, ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. We want to be productive, right? We want to be salt and light. So people will ask us about the hope. Now listen to this. But whoever does not have them is nearsighted and blind. If we don't understand that this is a way to walk, we're nearsighted and blind, forgetting that we have been, what, cleansed, from their past sins. In other words, our salvation has been taken care of. It's over. Like I said, read the first two chapters of Ephesians. This is a done deal. We're on our way to heaven. And you need to believe this and live by it. Let's go to Philippians 2, 14 uh, through 16, which really is so exciting to me. It says, do everything without grumbling and complaining so that you may become blameless and pure children, and watch, children of God without fault in a, what? a warped and crooked generation, then what? Then you will, look at here, then you will shine. Remember what he just said? Your light will shine. Then you will shine among them like stars in the sky because it's dark and you're shining. Now, verse 16, as you hold firmly to the word of what? The word of God, the word of life. You eat and drink it every day. That's it. You hold to the word of God, the word of life, and then I will be able to boast on the day of Christ that I did not run or labor in vain. 
We need to go and live our lives. And then it says, with fear and trembling, for it's God, what? For it's God in you who's doing what? His good and perfect will. And guys, watch out, because he's going to do whatever he wants, not what you want, but what he wants. So 2 Corinthians 5.13, we come back to this. We're going to keep coming back to it, and we'll close with this. Examine yourselves. Everybody here needs to look at your... You read the Word of God. Here's the deal. The way you examine yourself, how do you examine yourself? You read the Word of God. You study the Word of God. You get in groups like this. You pray, and you examine yourself and ask God, search me, O oh God, and know my heart, and see if there's any anxious ways in me. Lead me in the way everlasting, okay? That's Psalm uh, 139. Now listen carefully. Why is that so important? Now watch what it says here. Examine yourselves to see whether you're in the faith. See whether you're a goat or a sheep. Test yourselves. Do you not realize that Christ is in you? Now listen, this is the key. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Colossians 1.27, that's the mystery. That's what this is all about, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Unless, what? Unless, of course, you fail the test. And there's no Jesus in you. So who is it that can help you, and who is it that's going to bring you and bring and make sure you know that you're a sheep and not a goat? Okay? It talks about it, and again, we'll read it again in Romans 8. It's the Holy Spirit. Because if you live by the Spirit, you seek the Spirit, you love God, the Holy Spirit's in you. And the Holy Spirit will confirm that you're in Christ. So let's rejoice as we close. Let, let's pray and thank God again. So I'm going to thank him with the prayer that we pray every time, because when we're when we're together, wh why would we not want the gospel just to be spoken into our hearts? Why would we not want to do this? Why would you say, well, Don, why do you pray the same prayer every time? Because it's the only prayer. So why do you talk about the same thing all the time? It's the only thing to talk about. So why, Don, is it always that you're talking about Jesus and you know, you're always forcing the issue about Jesus? Because everything is about Jesus Christ. Everything. Now, I don't know why you're going to end up in the hospital down the road, but when you end up in the hospital, everything, listen carefully, will be about Jesus Christ. When I'm in there and they're doing the biopsies on my prostate, and they're about ready to put me down, and I'm talking to the girl and saying something and praying, you know, and, she, and I go to, she said, well, you'll go to sleep for a little while, and then you'll wake up and everything. Okay. When you're in that thing, and they're going to put you down a little sleep, and you're going to wake up, you know, no problem, no problem, no problem, no problem, no problem. Everything is about Jesus Christ. And then when you're sitting there for like 10 days waiting for the biopsy results, that's even more fun, because they don't put you to sleep then. And you're trying to go to sleep, and you're waiting for biopsy returns. What's well, everything? It's all about Jesus Christ. Then when you get the return, and just a lot of you guys got them, I got negative, but some of you guys got positive, and you're going to go in and meet with the doctor. Okay, what are we doing? And I remember, you know, everything's about Jesus Christ. So we're going to pray this prayer because everything is about Jesus Christ. And this prayer is to thank the Father. We're going to thank the Father. So, Father, thank you for sending Jesus, your one and only Son, to die on the cross for our sins. Thank you, Jesus, that you came as the Lamb of God to give your blood and your body to pay the price for our sin, to take the wrath upon yourself, Lord, the wrath that was coming for our sin. We're so thankful. And thank you, Jesus, that you walked out of that grave on the third day. You rose from the dead and defeated the power of sin and death in our lives, and you made us yours born-again children of the loving, living Father God in heaven, our name is written in the book of life for eternity, Lord. What a blessing. And you've given us your Holy Spirit to guide and comfort us. We're so thankful. I love you, Lord. Thank you for these men. I pray for each one of them and their families. I'm so thankful, Lord, that you blessed us this morning with this message. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you guys.